Now here's another thing. That if your toilet is rocking, it doesn't have to be exactly the same way front to back. Yours could be side to side and it could be moving a lot more than this one. You just follow this and maybe I'll give you some different ideas on how to fix your toilet, even if it's slightly different than this one. Okay, so listen up. Now here's another thing that I want to take into consideration. Because this toilet's rocking, you might, you might think, is that affecting the wax ring that's under there? Because obviously if I can push this up and down just slightly, that means maybe my seal where the wax ring is is not 100% perfect, right? Well, that could be a concern. And so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to flush the toilet. I'm going to watch around here and make sure there's no water coming around. In fact, I don't think there will be because, here, let me flush it anyways. Because I've looked, I've looked before and you can see there's no visible wetness down here or any sort of mark where water has come out or anything like that. Okay. So I know the Herkel flange and the wax ring are tight. We're moving up and down at the front. Right here, you're not moving. Here is maybe a 32nd or 64th of an inch that's moving, which means back in here, you're hardly moving at all. So I'm not really concerned about the wax ring, even if the wax ring is not fitting 100%, I mean 99.9%, .9%, you could get some air or, or some gases no sewer gases coming back up through there, coming up through that crack, coming out here. So that's why you need to make sure that your toilet's caulked. If your toilet's not caulked properly, you're not going to seal in any of those gases that may leak around your wax ring. Now, normally your wax ring is going to be tight no matter what, but if your, if your toilet is wobbling to the left and to the right or front to back, you could have a concern about that. So one of the things, when I get done with this, where, where I've got the hairline crack, obviously there's a hairline crack from here, goes all the way around the toilet, at least back to that point. So I'm going to have to recalk that, mainly uh, to seal in any sort of possible gases. All right? Now, if, you're, if you're a bathroom, if you're not smelling anything, chances are you're, you're not going to have that issue. I'm, I'm talking if, you, if it's a major thing. I mean, obviously, you don't, want to, you don't want to put a band-aid on something that's really, really super bad. The best, the best thing to do, you know, if yours is 50% worse than this and it's rocking all over the place. And, uh, you know, at that point, you're probably better off removing the whole toilet, scraping off the wax ring, installing a new wax ring, putting new toilet bolts on there, redoing everything for a 100% job, especially if your toilet is you know, 15, 20 years old, 30 years old. I mean, this one, this one's only uh, no more than eight years old and everything looks good and that's why I'm choosing to do it this way. This toilet is taking forever to fill up and that's because it's an old water fill valve. The pipe here is already starting to discolor. It's getting rusty right in here and, and stuff. Man, somebody needs to replace that. You know, water fill valves, you know, I got those on my channel too, on how to remove one, how to install one, and all that. They don't cost very much, and they fill up way quicker than this old style. Check them out. Here's the front of that toilet. I'm going to zoom you in here. Now, that caulking is not that thick, but when I put weight on there, you see how it moves a little bit? I hope you can see that. It's not a whole lot, but it's just really annoying every time you get up and down off the toilet. You know what I mean? That's why we've got to fix that. Do you see now why even if I tighten up these bolts way back here, it's really not going to affect this front very much. We're not really going to be pushing that down very much because this tile right here is lower than this.
tile. Okay? So there's nothing up here. So how are we going to do that? I've got a couple ideas. Do you? Here's what I thought I would do to fix this toilet once and for all. Okay, because there's I know this tile is low in the grout or the caulking right here is pretty thick. I can cut this out with my sheetrock knife and I can put some shims underneath there. Now there's nothing from here back, at least at least to this point. I could I could put a long like a wood shim in there, let's say. I could cut it short and kind of pooch that in there and poke it in just far enough so I can put some new caulking there. I don't really like to use wood shims and I know um, some other plumbers do use those, but those get a tendency to get soggy and then they get squishy. You know, if you get any moisture from uh, the toilet from the interior side. And so I don't usually like to do that. You could go to the store. You know, a, a wood shim is tapered from maybe a half an inch or three eighths of an inch to nothing, like maybe six inches or eight inches long. Well, they have little plastic hint. Uh, shims like that at the store with little breaks on there and you could snap those off and you can wedge those in there. I wish I had some of those with me but I don't and so sometimes you have to do with what you have and this is what I have. I got some little pieces of sheet metal and let me tell you anytime you you have you do something with sheet metal and you think oh I'm not going to use any more well, think twice. See, here, here's a piece I had, and I was going to throw that away. And I thought, you know what, I better not. I better save it in case I need it someday. And here's my someday. How am I going to use this as a shim? Well, see, what I can do is I can cut a strip like this, and I was going to even throw that away, but I just happened to have that. Now I can fold this and make my own little shim out of it. Okay? Wouldn't you know, somebody wants Joe. Before I start fashioning this into a little shim, and incidentally, you know, is this the, the perfect thing for a shim? Well, I wish, like I said, I had some plastic shims that I could use for that instead. This is metal, and over time, it could rust, but I'm only going to make it may be a half inch long or whatever after I roll this up. I'm going to kind of roll this up with a pair of pliers and stuff and I can pooch that in there. It's only going to stick in so far. And could it rust out years? Yeah, maybe 30 years from now. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned about it. Alright. So before I mess with that, I'm just going to take my sheetrock knife and i got to score this and I want to, I want to take this out of there. Okay. I don't, I don't have to take it all out. I'm just going to take out, you know, maybe from here to here. And just be careful with it. You don't want to cut your fingers or, or gouge up your floor. Now, I don't have to really score it up here, do I? Because that, there's already a gap there, right? Just have to keep scoring it down here. Okay. Now, I probably could have some gloves on to, you know, protect my knuckles. But, you know, if I can do this, you can do this. Not that hard. You know, do you really, you really have to call a plumber for this? You know, you pay a plumber to come out here, who knows how much he's going to charge you. He's going to charge you 95 bucks or more, you know, on something that you could probably do on your own. Nothing doing. I'm not going to do it. And that's why I thought, since I'm going to do it, you can probably do it too. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Oh. Okay. I can work on 
tighten that a little bit more. Now it moves even further because that, see the caulking after it dried was kind of wedged up under there. Right? Okay. I'm going to clean this out just a little bit more. Be right back.